I welcome you in this video lecture of overview of subject part 2. So in this video, I am going to give the introduction to the second section of this subject machine design 1. So this is unit number 4 of second section. Manufacturing considerations in design and design of shafts, keys and couplings. So this unit 4 has two parts. So part 1 is manufacturing considerations in a design. So that means manufacturing considerations in design forms the first part and design of shaft, keys and couplings forms the second part. So in the part 1, there are four articles, design considerations for casting, design considerations for forging and design considerations for machine parts. And the last one is a design for manufacture and assembly. So this part one has no numerical treatment. It is completely theoretical unit. So just for the introduction, I will tell you what we are going to study in this unit. So design considerations for casting. Now here we have to consider some factors while manufacturing the cast component with respect to design aspects. For example, if you consider a component produced by casting process. Now we know that the components produced by casting process are subject when they are, when they are subjected to load, a particular type of load they can carry properly. And if they are loaded in certain ways, they get failed. So which are the loading condition which is suitable for casting process that we have to study. For example, in this picture, I have shown one component produced by casting process and I have applied the compressive load. If this load compressive load is applied to this cast component, it will not fail. It can sustain this compressive load because the cast component are good under compression. But if the same component is subjected to tensile load, then this cast component cannot take this tensile load properly. It will fail at certain load. So we can say that this cast component are poor, gives poor performance under tensile load. So that means cast component are good under tensile load, sorry, compressive load and cast component are perform poor under tensile load. Similarly, if you consider this component which is to be produced by a casting process, it has four arms and these four arms intersect at one point. If this component to be produced by a casting process, then there will be definitely shrinkage cavity will produce at the intersection of these four arms and in order to eliminate this problem of shrinkage gravity, we have to make some changes while producing this component by casting process. So as at the cross section of these arms, shrinkage gravity will produce, we have to provide the core at the intersection point. So this, this hole represents the hole produced by core in the pattern. So in the pattern itself, we have to provide the core so that the shrinkage gravity that we have produced at the intersection of arm, arm will not produce as we have kept here core in the pattern while producing this part by casting process. So that means we have to provide the core if such component is there. That means if there is a possibility of shrinkage gravity, we have to provide the core and such aspects are discussed in this chapter. The next unit Next part of this unit is design of shaft keys and couplings. This part too has a numerical treatment. Now first article is material of shaft. Now here we are going to discuss which are the materials used for the shaft. Then next part is design of solid hollow shaft on the strength basis and on the basis of torsional rigidity. Remember that these two parts you have studied in the torsion. Additionally, we are going to discuss two criteria that is strength basis criteria for the design of shaft and rigidity basis criteria for design of shaft. Okay, so we are going to discuss in detail in this unit. Then the next part is asymmetric code for shaft design. 
ASME stands for American Society for Mechanical Engineers. Okay, so this is actually the third criteria for the design of shaft. Okay, this ASME codes is the third criteria for shaft design. Previous two are strength basis criteria and torsional rigidity basis criteria, and this one is the third one. So this criteria is provided by American Society for Mechanical Engineers. Some changes are suggested by this ASME while designing the shaft, and which considers some of the practical aspects. Which which is to be considered while design of shaft. For example, in the strength basis and torsional rigidity basis criteria for shaft design, the shock or impact load is not considered. But ASME has suggested and given the guideline how you can consider or how you can implement this shock load and impact load while designing the shaft so that your shaft will not fail. Then the next part is the design of square and flat key. so we have uh, there are number of types of keys but we have only square and flat key design in our syllabus so we are, we are going to focus on square and flat key design then the next part is spline shaft it's we have only introductory treatment that is only theory we have to study related to spline shaft this spline shaft is used in the gear box okay so splines are there on the shaft and by with the help of this spline shaft we can have the linear motion of shaft along the on the shaft sorry we can have the linear motion of gear or pulley or flywheel which is to be which is mounted on the shaft okay so we can have linear motion of component to be mounted on shaft the next is types of couplings we have mock coupling a rigid coupling rigid flange coupling and this part has numerical treatment excluding spline shaft so on spline shaft numerical treatment is not there so now we'll consider this part to what exactly we have to do so there are three components that we need to design first one is the shaft second one is the key and that is square key or flat key and third one is the coupling so i have mentioned here i have shown here the diagram of rigid flange coupling so in machine drawing you might have seen this diagram so here actually we have to design this coupling so actually while designing what we are going to do so we are going to find out the dimensions suppose here we you want to design the shaft that means this diameter d of shaft you have to determine here if you want to design the key that means you have to find out the dimensions of this key that means you have to find out b you have to find out this h and you have to find out this l similarly if you want to design the coupling you have to find out this dimensions like small d then this d1 then this dr then this t then this t1 and this dh okay so what i want to say here is that you are designing a certain components that means you are finding out its dimensions okay so i am going to discuss this part that means what we are going to do actually while designing the components i'm going to explain in the second unit okay then a rigid flange coupling now you just go through this video so that you can understand what are the parts of rigid flange coupling so that it will be easy to while designing this rigid flange coupling
Similarly, you go through this video of bush pin flexible coupling so that you can understand what are the different parts in bush pin flexible coupling. But remember that you don't have to uh, you don't you don't have to solve the problems based on bush pin flexible coupling for the theory. But in practical, we have to see the design of this bush pin flexible coupling in detail. So this part we are going to study in practicals. Bush type flexible coupling. In this coupling, two flanges are used to transmit power. One of the flanges has bigger size holes on the pitch circle. The flanges are kept in position and the shafts are assembled with the flanges using taper sunk keys. The flexible bushes are fitted into the bigger sized holes of the flanges. Finally, both the flanges are connected together by means of bolts, nuts and washers. The flexible bush allows for slight misalignment of the axis of the shaft and it also enables power transmission from one flange to the other without shock. Now the next unit is unit number 5 design of springs and on this unit there is a numerical treatment. So the content of this unit is types of springs and their applications, terminologies of helical spring, styles of end spring materials, stress and deflection in the helical spring, series and parallel springs, introduction to lip springs, numerical treatment excluding lip spring. So on lip spring numerical treatment will not be there but on helical compression spring particularly numericals will be there. So just for the example, I have shown the spring cross section here. So it has different terminologies like this outer diameter, outer coil, outer diameter of coil, inner diameter of coil. Then this is a free length. Free length means when the spring is not subjected to any external load, then at that time, the whatever the length is there, it is called as free length. Then this is the mean coil diameter. Then this is the pitch that is center to center distance between two cross section of adjacent coil cross section of spring wire and this is the wire diameter d so th this is some term these are the some terminologies of helical spring in this way we have to uh, study this spring and while designing the spring we have to find out this pitch we have to find out this wire diameter we have to find out this mean coil diameter we have to find out this free le free length and sometimes uh, inner coil diameter and outside coil diameter will be asked. Okay. Additionally, we have to find out the solid length and compressed length while designing the spring. So that means we are designing the spring. That means we have to find out such dimensional parameters. Okay. Then also additionally, we have to study that what are the types of stresses that are induced in the spring like uh, direct shear stress, torsional shear stress. And we have to study its derivation. Also, we have to find out the derivation for deflection. That means whenever the force is applied on the spring, we know that the spring is going to deflect. So the derivation for deflection, the equation for deflection we have to derive. Uh, also, we have important article that is series and parallel spring. So it is uh, related to stiffness. Okay, so how we can uh, connect two springs either in parallel or series and what is the effect of these combinations on the stiffness that we have to study in this series and parallel springs and we know that this lip spring this lip spring is used in heavy duty uh, vehicles because its stiffness is high as the load is high the stiffness required is high and this lip spring provides high stiffness so this lip spring we have to study here now this is about the unit number five design of springs now the next unit and last unit is a design of joints 
So in this design of joints, we have to focus on numerical treatment as well. Now its content is bolted joints. So in the bolted joint, we have to see the simple analysis eccentrically loaded bolted joint in shear eccentric load perpendicular to axis of bolt and numerical e, numerical treatment is limited to static loading. So here we are not going to consider the fluctuating load, only static load will be considered. Next is welded joint. So in the welded joint, we have to see the strength of butt welds, transverse fillet welds, axially loaded unsymmetrical lap joint, eccentrically loaded welded joint in shear and with numerical treatment. In the riveted joint, the types of failure and strength equations we have to study about the riveted joints and but here we have to study these riveted joints only with the theoretical aspects. We don't have to solve the numerical on riveted joints. Okay, so this is about bolted, welded and riveted joints. Remember that while uh, though this content is looks very lengthy, but there is a similarity between bolted joint and welded joint design. Now if you consider this bolt joint, here a different dimensions are shown for the bolt that is DC as a core diameter, D as a outer diameter or major diameter and this force is applied on the bolts and as the result of force applied this bolt is subjected to failure or it is subjected to stress. So we are designing the bolt that means we have to find out this core diameter DC and major diameter D. Okay, so we are going to see how to find out this core diameter DC and major diameter D when it is subjected to different types of loading condition. For example, here this is one bracket where the bracket is attached to the wall by using four bolts 1, 2, 3 and 4. So four bolts are used to mount this bracket on the wall and the load is applied at some distance from these four bolts. Okay, so this load causes some eccentricity because this, this is the G that is CG of these four bolts and the load is applied away from the CG of these four bolts. So this causes the eccentric load and what are the effects of this eccentric load on these bolts? What are the different types of stresses that are going to induce in this bolt that we have to study? Now if you compare the welded joints, in the welded joints we have one bracket and it is welded to the wall, metal wall by using weld joints. Now you can identify the similarity. Here these are the two weld joints and this is the CG of these two welds and the load is applied away from this CG. So this load is applied away from CG by distance E. So this causes eccentricity in the system and we can compare the similarity between we can compare these two joints bolt joint and welder joints. So almost the similarity is there in only we have replaced these bolts by weld joints. Okay. So obviously the cross section of bolt is different and cross section of weld joint will be different. But the analysis method that we have to apply for design of bolt and design of weld joint is almost similar. The same logic we have to apply for design of bolt and design of weld joints as the loading is same, eccentric load is applied. So in this way we have to comparatively study this bolt joint design and weld joint design. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any query related to this article or this uh, overview of subject, you can mention in the comment section.